This Ridley O is sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com. The Federal Matrix needs a New Hampshire Zion. Actually, I'm not sure if this is true, but it's possible. For those of you who've seen the movie The Matrix, or many more specifically those of you who haven't, uh, the idea was that when machines took over the world, they kind of had to provide a place or allow a place where people could be a little bit free. Those few who could just not live with the machine's dream world were allowed to go to Zion. Maybe 5% of people. And this isn't just a Hollywood concept. History speaks to it as well. This has happened before in the United States. When the federal government became so oppressive in the 1850s uh, that there was a civil war after it engaged in all kinds of atrocities, even Washington realized it could not just keep getting worse forever. The Washington government's behavior got much better in the 1870s, and it let people be free if they would just move west. Sort of free. And what followed, the 1870s, it was a period of time uh, in which uh, it was unprecedented growth. There was really no, I'm not sure I could even point to a better decade, in terms of human improvement. Terrible things were done to the Indians, but I am, I mean, we're talking about Washington here. There's only so much to work with. There's only so much good to work with. But it was one of the biggest periods of deflation in human history. Things kept getting less and less expensive. Manufacturing was getting better and better very quickly. Crime was extremely low in the West. My understanding is that the worst cities of the West, the, the infamous shootout cities like Dodge City, Kansas, were uh, safer by a factor of 30. 30 times safer than modern-day Baltimore. Modern-day Dodge City, by the way, is much more dangerous than the Dodge City that you see in the movies. I know, I used to live near there. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit off topic. I'm just trying to I'm trying to focus on the historical precedent. The Feds do have a history of pulling back. They pulled back after World War II. In the 1950s, there was another unprecedented, almost unprecedented period of prosperity and, and improvements after the Feds pulled back from their expansion in World War II. But the, but the interesting part here is, is the frontier part. When we see Washington growing into one of its... An, you know, occasional gargantuan oversteps. This one likely to be much less successful than the Civil War or World War II. We can also think about what probably happens afterwards. And we can think, too, about what are the areas, and not very many, but what are the areas of commonality between free staters, for instance, and the Washington government? One of the very few that there is is the fact that they need a frontier almost as much as we do. One of the reasons why there's so much angst and trouble around the world right now is, is that there isn't a frontier. When Washington gave people a frontier in the 1870s, it benefited, as did the colonists. If something like that could be replicated in America without the mistreatment of Indians problem, one of the most despicable things that ever happened in American history, well, then maybe that could be a win-win situation. So far, it seems like the feds are sort of letting that happen. They're letting a new frontier be established in New Hampshire for liberty. They only occasionally bother or arrest any of us. Now, part of that is because it often takes the feds 10 years to do anything about something they have a problem with. So, for instance, those of us who arrived here in the 03, 06 era... I would guess probably quite a few of us stopped paying our income taxes, and I stopped in 2006, I think. That means the reckoning for me would likely be around 2016, and there's going to be that kind of delay for a lot of people. So we're going to see probably an uptick in federal activity against free staters, but they certainly have not treated us like a militia uh, much, generally. They have not treated us like they've treated their opponents in Afghanistan and Iraq. Apparently they've even treated us a little better than the Tea Party. 
if the latest IRS scandal is any indication. A lot of that, though, is just because we're small. But maybe just a continuation of this sort of halfway hands-off approach will serve Washington's interest to some extent as well as it serves ours. They can know that everyone who's really angry at them from the libertarian persuasion has something they can do other than violence. This release valve, which is such a part of American history in so many different ways, is starting to function again, not just uh, in New Hampshire, but uh, in, in other parts of the country. You're starting to see the press, in some cases, do its job a bit. <laughs> there is a new press that's forming. There are elements of gridlock starting to show themselves in Washington. Apparently there have been a lot of filibusters. Well, all Washington needs to do is nothing. And it can, can, it can start to reestablish some of what worked for it in the past. Just keep letting people have some degree of freedom in New Hampshire, the freedom to move here, and maybe you'll start to find yourself playing the role of the goose that laid the golden egg. Maybe some of the people who would have tried to hurt you will instead just come here and make money. The other benefit to kind of leaving us alone is that it will become more and more difficult, or at least it will not become easy, for liberty folk to push secession. Having a sort of frontier type situation in New Hampshire, well, I mean, it could prevent New Hampshire from trying to leave the Union. Because if you think about it, the, the amounts of freedom that were granted in the West uh, resulted in, well, there really weren't much by way of secession movements uh, in, in the uh, frontier west, uh, in the frontier west. Uh, Utah, maybe, but again, that makes my point for me. When you kill people, <laughs> which they did kill quite a few in Utah, Mormons, uh, that's what triggers a desire for secession. Now, it may be that secession will become a big deal regardless of what anyone does, just because of the debt crisis and everybody wanting to get out of the federal system. But there is a historical precedent for federals doing terrible things and then kind of leaving people alone, or both at the same time. There is a precedent for freedom existing inside the federal framework, for freedom lovers to get a bit of what, uh, what they want without secession. So, you Washington folk, five or ten of you who are listening to this, Give some thought to the benefits of New Hampshire freedom. Or, go ahead and massively crack down on us and lose us completely. This Ridley O sponsored by friends of BitcoinStore.com Half a million items for sale, often cheaper than Amazon. The easiest way to convert your Bitcoins into real world stuff. They're privacy friendly, you don't even have to give your name. BitcoinStore.com